Airtable just made some huge new announcements, including rebranding as a connected app platform and two-way sync coming in 2023. But arguably the most game-changing feature is actually available immediately. And that feature is the ability to limit what data people can see when you give them access to an interface. So we've always been able to share small pieces of our overall data set by using shareable view links but there was no way for the user to interact with that information. They couldn't edit it. Putting that functionality into an interface allows people to actually interact with the data, which brings Airtable much closer to its end goal, which is to allow users to create full-fledged apps. That might all sound very abstract. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this new feature as a part of a payroll system where employees can enter, edit, and delete their own hours without having access to anyone else's information. So. If you have 10 employees and they're all entering their own hours, they're only gonna see their own set. And then of course, as the admin, you'll be able to see everything, but you're able to limit people's access to only the stuff that is relevant to them. And because we're using an interface, we can really tailor exactly how we want it to look and really guide people through the process of entering their hours. So let's hop right into it. You should know that as of now, only people who have Airtable accounts can make use of this feature, meaning uh, if you create a, an interface and then you share it with certain people, um, you must share it with actual accounts and they also must be on your paid billing plan. This is a feature that's just on the pro and enterprise plan. In the future, I really hope that Airtable allows us to share interfaces with anyone, even people who don't have an Airtable account. And I think that they will get there. All right, so like I said in the intro, we are creating a payroll system. So this is a place where employees can enter their hours, edit them and delete them if they need to make changes. And then as the administrator, I can look over these hours and approve them when I'm running payroll. And most importantly for this to work, we need a user field. So this one right here, if I go in here, is the user field type. And this is what actually allows them to pick themselves um, out of the list of Airtable users that are associated with this Airtable account. And that's how we can then have control over the permissions for who sees what. So you can see here that I've got a couple different users here. There's me and then there's Three Rings Media. All right, so now that we've got our setup, I wanna create an interface. And actually one really helpful feature that they just uh, released is that if you command click on a Mac or control click on a PC, you can open a table in another window or even an automations window or interfaces. So if I command click interfaces, then it's gonna open up a new tab with the interface. And so I can still go back and look at my data if I want, um, but I've got my, my interfaces dialog here. So to create a new interface, we'll hit this button here. Let's call this enter hours. Give it a color. And then I'm actually, uh, so they, these are basically template options of kind of where you, where you could start. I'm just going to start with a blank canvas, finish. And then the first thing I'm going to do is create a grid here and put it in the middle. And so here's our grid of our information. And, you know, what, what do we need to show the employees? Um, if we go over to the right sidebar here and scroll down, I can choose which fields are visible. So most of this looks pretty good, but I don't need the approved field, so I can get rid of that. And I'll lose this little add element window so we can see it better. And now for the most important step, which is the permissions. So we can see here, here's our permissions dialog. We've made it editable, so the grid is editable. And then we can filter the records. And so we have these three options here. We can show all records. We can show the viewer's records only or we can show specific records. So specific records would be basically, it's just like a filter um, in, you know, in a table view. And so you can just filter to show very specific information. But what we wanna do here is the viewers records only. So you can see I am viewing as myself here. So when I did that, it filtered out all of the three rings media entries. And so you only see Julian post here. Then if I went here, and this, this allows me to view as different options. So then if I wanted to view as three rings media, then it shows me only the three rings media entries here. So, you know, this is mimicking like if an employee named three rings media was looking at it, this is what they'd see. So we'll go back to Julian. And so as an employee, I could just go in here with this interface and click the plus icon and then enter a new record. So let's 
you know, put in some information here. And it already knows because I'm viewing as myself. It's already going to add the employee as me. So we've got our new record here. And then, you know, if I need to, I can go in and edit it or I can even delete it. And because we're using the interface builder, we can actually add other elements to this screen. So for example, it's kind of annoying that I've got these 539 records here if I'm just entering hours, you know, for the past two weeks. Uh, and so we need to add some filters so that we can kind of show just a more limited amount of information. So I click add element here. We can scroll to the bottom and click filter. And let's put that right at the top. So for this filter, I'm going to make the condition where date is after an exact date. And then let's make a, another condition within that block that says where the date is before an exact date. And so that way, um, the person who's entering stuff can, can get a, a specific date range. And I'm just going to scrunch that in a little bit so that it's stacked. So, and the last thing we need to do with our filter up here is to connect it to the grid view down here. So if I uh, go over on the side picker here with the selected, I can connect it to an element and then I'm going to connect it to the timesheets grid. And so now that it's connected, now when I enter a date here, a beginning and an ending date, it will then just filter so you can only see the records which fall within that date range. So let's go ahead and publish this interface. And now we can see exactly what it will look like when we share it with uh, other team members. So um, they'll get this nice picker up here. And let's say we want to make it a little more narrow, just like half a month. And um, so we can do that. And then we can still go in here, add records or edit and delete. And in addition to like an internal team setting, like what I described here, one other super common use case will be with content creators, social media managers to share information with clients. So this is like you could set up an awesome interface where you can um, create assets and then share the assets with your clients to get reviews and feedback. And we'd probably set up um, not a grid view, but there are some views where you can view one record on the whole page so you can see a bunch of different assets and they could add their own notes or even have like an approval checkbox. And so there's just so many use cases. It's really, really exciting to think about all the different stuff we could create with this. So lastly, just so we can see where we are, if I click enter hours, return to interfaces, then I can see my navigation and get back to data. If you are as excited as I am about this new feature, you should watch this video about how Excel revolutionized the creation of software over the past 40 years and how Airtable is set up to do the exact same thing. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.